Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back. This question was asked by Snap six times in the last six months. So let's get into this problem. Word search. We're essentially given an N by M grid or board of letters and we just need to, to find a path in this board grid where we can only traverse vertically and horizontally such that we get the path equal to the word over here. So for this example, we can see that this path gives us the word here. Pretty simple, right? Now, this question is clearly a depth research algorithm problem. The tricky part of this problem though is kind of figuring out which nodes to begin a depth research on and how we're going to keep track of the visited nodes and set and everything like that. Um, so with our algorithm, what we do essentially is just iterate the entire grid and we start the depth first search on every single node over here. And the key invariant that we need to keep track of in order to continue the depth first search is that the current path is a prefix of the word that we have. So if we start depth first search on the letter A, A is a prefix of W, so we continue the DFS and we only append nodes, we only add children to the depth first search if the, child, if the child is also a prefix of A. So in this situation, S wouldn't be added as a neighbor, um, only B would have been added. So that's the way the depth first search would work. And if we run DFS on every single node and we can't find um, a path, that equals the word, then that's when just we, we return false. And that's the end of that, that first search. So the algorithm isn't too difficult to understand. It's mainly the implementation that's kind of difficult. Like for example, how are you going to compute the offsets and how are you going to validate that the nodes in those, uh, the childs of those offsets are part of the prefix of word, right? So my suggestion for when you're approaching this problem is um, to utilize backtracking. And when you do backtracking in DFS, you essentially, what you do is you first commit to a specific node. And then if the commitment to the node or path or whatever doesn't satisfy what you're looking for, you backtrack or you go back to your previous step. And so you add to your visited set here. And then if you're not satisfied, you know, after the recursion, you delete the visited node from your visited set. And that essentially allows you to sort of only modify a single location in memory um, to avoid having to copy the entire board over. One mistake a lot of people kind of make when they design these algorithms is that they unintentionally copy the entire board for every single node that they traverse. You want to avoid that, right? So the, the key to avoiding that is by um, making sure that in your depth research and backtracking steps, you are popping out, you know, your path. If the current path isn't, isn't um, equal to the word that you're looking for, we can essentially, in the recursion step, we can essentially like um, set the result of the recursion equal to some variable called try path over here. And this is the result of the recursive call to DFS with some child node. And we can just do a check, right? If the try path is not false, then we just return true and go up to call stack from there. So yeah, that's the um, sort of the approach, the algorithm. And so the time complexity of this algorithm is going to be big O of n times. So we start the DFS on every single node that we um, traverse. And now we don't need to use DFS to traverse the entire grid because that would be unnecessary unless the word is equal to the length of the entire you know, board. But um, it might not be, right? So in this situation, we kind of need to think about the tree of traversals right? How deep our tree is going to be. 
if we imagine the DFS backtracking steps. So obviously like in the first, the first time we traverse the DFS, we have four choices to go in, right? Four choices. Um, now later when we go through the actual DFS, we're not gonna go back to a specific choice because that would be part of the visited set. And so really the um, number of choices boils down to three. So we instead have a three airy tree. So the time complexity is big O of N, the number of, of um, items in our board, times three to the power of W. And W is the length of the word that we're searching for because at most our path could be only as long as W and also um, the number of choices uh, we would have to explore at most would be three to the power of W. And in terms of space complexity, we would only need to store the path length. So big O of W here as well.